What is going on, everybody, and welcome back to another Pittsburgh Pirates franchise here on MLB 22 The Show. We are back here with episode number three, and we are going to be diving into a bunch of things in today's video. So if you guys are excited for that, be sure to leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe for more amazing content, because only you, only you can make a difference for today's channel, so your support is greatly appreciated. And with that being said, guys, let's get right into today's video, and right in front of you, you are going to be looking at where is around the first half half of spring training I kind of just wanted to kind of talk about some of these players how their spring performances are one of the players we're going to be mentioning in this one is Travis Swaggerty who is having quite the exceptional spring training in 23 at bats he has a 980 OPS while hitting for a 435 batting average with two stolen bases and four RBIs definitely putting up a very impressive spring training along with him are guys that we are expecting to do very good like Cabrian Hayes Michael Conforto surprisingly enough Michael Chavez is looking like he could be doing something at the second base role. Also going to be a guy worth mentioning we're going to be getting into in a second. He is definitely going to be that super utility guy also being uh, a guy that is going to be playing a lot of first base as well for us. Andrew McCutcheon of course having a nice spring training as well. Roberto Perez is striking out a lot but able to produce a lot of power from that catching spot so even if he is only hitting a 222 average if he can keep that OPS at that 811 or even a little bit higher than that I'm going to kind of take that as a win for that and then a couple other guys to be mentioning that are having quite a pretty good spring so far is Tusapita Marcano, one of the guys that the Pirates got in the Adam Frazier trade last year with the San Diego Padres. And that also included another player in Jack Sow Sowinski, who is also having a very nice spring training with the Pirates. So far, a 748 OPS with a 250 batting average. Sowinski definitely one of the guys that needs to kind of make a little more of a leap if we want to see him at the major league level. But that is not exactly what today's video is going to be talking about. We are going to be talking about the Pirates and how we are performing, but we are definitely going to be playing on planning on talking about how we are going to be making moves in this team to build and one of those things that we did is go out reach out to the Halos and talk to the Los Angeles Angels and make a trade to acquire starting pitcher Michael Lorenzen who does not actually end up getting to put on an Angels uniform at all he is going to end up pitching for the Pittsburgh Pirates to start the 2022 season and we also end up getting one of their former top prospects and a guy that is definitely starting to hopefully pan out in 22-year-old Joe Adele, the outfielder from Adele. The Pirates ended up giving up three players in this trade. One of them was starting pitcher Mitch Keller, which I think is kind of a fair guy to kind of start giving up on. I personally, in this franchise, thought that it was a good time to give up on Mitch Keller and move on, so we ended up sending him while the little bit of potential was there. Cole Tucker, definitely kind of same thing with Mitch Keller really wasn't panning out in the big league so we wanted to make a move and maybe get some guys that were a little more upside and upbringing we also ended up sending Greg Allen who's again not going to be putting on a Pittsburgh Pirates uniform he is going to be finding himself playing in the outfield with Mike Trout but it is worth mentioning that some of the guys that we got one of them is Michael Lorenzen I want to kind of take a second to talk about Michael Lorenzen this is a guy that is a pretty solid pitcher does not allow a lot of home runs has some nasty break on his pitch pitches, has a good mix of fastballs with a cutter and a fastball, a high velocity guy can get the average fastball of Average average velocity of his fastball up to 97 miles an hour. So Michael Lorenzen is definitely a guy to kind of keep his outlook on. Um, I think he's going to be a guy that we can definitely see definitely bring some upside onto the team this year. Mitch Keller was a guy that was more of a project, and I think with our build now mentality instead of having that Bob Nutting mentality that the Pirates had before I think someone like Michael Lorenzen can definitely play a pretty big suit and for those of you guys that didn't show it in this video Michael Lorenzen has great batting statistics I think he has like almost a 60 power both ways um, and with this whole two-way player status that you can see in the top right corner I really think it would be interesting to maybe kind of make a mini Shohei Otani-esque build with Michael Lorenzen. I think it would be very interesting to see if maybe not only this guy could be a starting pitcher for us, but kind of pick up that DH role and kind of institute that and maybe bring that along the league a little bit more. But Michael Lorenzen is definitely a guy that I'm very excited to see what we can do in a major league uniform. Moving on to another big upside that I think we got in this trade was getting a potential 22-year-old in Joe Adele. He is a right fielder, but I do kind of see this guy maybe moving himself a little bit more to the 
center field role. Uh, the fielding is definitely not there, but he is very speedy. Uh, the plus side on this guy is he does have some nice pop against the lefties. I think this is going to complement a lot of the bats that we struggle. Um, I do expect him to maybe even get a lot of DH attempts at the major league level. If he performs well, he is more than likely going to start out in the minor leagues, probably at the AAA level, to really see how he performs. Um, a lot of the other guys in spring training are definitely going to be earning a little more of a chance at the major league level to start, but I do expect Joe Adele to definitely be pushing into a Pittsburgh Pirates uniform around spring training. Um, this is definitely a guy that hopefully maybe can even take a role where Ben Gamble being that fourth outfielder, maybe Joe Adele, depending on how he plays in the minors, can definitely take that slot. Adele is also worth mentioning. He only has a small sample size of appearances at the major league level. Only 73 games played, but he does have seven home runs. Uh, not the best sample size again. Like I said, only a 339 slugging with just a 255 on base percentage and hovering around that Mendoza line at a career batting average at 205. Again, that's only 73 games and 254 at bats. He was only 20 years old whenever he made his major league debut in that COVID 2020 year. So it was already a weird year to begin with. Had a very high strikeout range at 55. De definitely kind of known for striking out a lot at the major league level. So hopefully we can take that into the minor leagues and kind of neutralize that and shut that down for him. And I think we could have a really nice product in Joe Adele. Moving Moving on to the next move the Pirates made. And without breaking the bank and getting too crazy, the Pirates end up getting another nice acquisition in a starting pitcher again in Jesus Lazardo from the Miami Marlins. You guys can say what you want about this trade, but I think this is a very nice step in the right direction for the Pittsburgh Pirates. We ended up sending over Jared Eikhoff and Josh Van Meter to the Miami Marlins. I think they're kind of a little more suited. Uh, Eikhoff is going to be more along the lines of that bottom echelon of the start rotation for them. He definitely would have probably found a home with the Pittsburgh Pirates, but I'm not really looking for a guy that is going to be a one-year rental. I'm looking for guys that are going to be ready to pitch at the major league level that we are going to be able to control for a good while into their uh, contract. I want to have guys that we can build in, and Jesus Lazardo seems like he is going to be that guy for me. At only 24 years old, this is a lefty with a lot of upside, a lot of good velocity, a lot of good break, has a nasty 12-6 curveball as one of his main pitches. The thing that struggles with Jesus Lazardo is he does like to let up the long ball a little bit, and he is not known to really work deep into games. So with that being said, at the end of the day, I think we might have honestly got a really nice left-handed reliever if he does not pan in the starting role. I would like to try to push Lozardo in to be a starter, but we will see how that kind of works out with him. Um, again, being 24 years old, B potential, I think this is a guy that could really develop and maybe by 27 years old you could see this guy hit that 80 overall maybe and be a nice middle of the rotation guy I'm not expecting him to be an ace I'm not expecting him to be competing with the best but I am hoping that he can definitely turn himself into a nice middle of the rotation piece for this Pittsburgh Pirates staff to come looking at his general stats he is not the worst pitcher but it definitely <laughs> could be a little bit better he has a Good bit of a sample size, over 100 innings with 166 innings in that. He does, again, allow a decent bit of home runs. In only 95 innings last year, he gave up 20 long balls, but he did strike out 98 batters, so he is averaging just over a strikeout per inning. That is definitely something that you want to see. Didn't do that well in Oakland. Ended up moving over to Miami. And did, again, not really do well there, so we're going to kind of take the gamble with Jesus Lazardo, see what we can do. Didn't really send a lot away. So I think really this is more of just a budget move at the same time and getting a nice prospect in the same package. So right now we're going to kind of wrap things up, talk about the spring performances, some of the top performers, and then move into the opening day roster and then get into first pitch right now. And jumping into the end of the season spring stats for some of the top performers and as talked about in the Half portion of the very beginning of this video, we talked about Travis Swaggerty and how he was having a very good first half of spring, and that absolutely carried over into the second half of spring, and that is actually going to be good enough to give this guy a chance at the major league level. Although Swaggerty is only a 62 overall B potential, Swaggerty is going to be more along the fourth, fifth outfielder guy for us. 
I'm definitely going to hopefully get some at-bats. Um, I think he's a nice lefty to have. Hopefully he can develop. He's obviously proven that he can compete at the major league level. A lot of this stuff was quick sims, and I did play a couple games myself. But I think it was a nice mix, and Travis Swaggerty definitely seems to be a guy that we can definitely look into the future. A couple guys also that was worth noting that were very exciting to see. Uh, one was Jack Saw Sawinski. He hit 314, and he is also going to be getting a trip to the major leagues. He did steal one base, again, hitting that 314 average. Average with a nearly 500 slugging at a 490 and then an OPS at the 847. Jack Sawinski definitely looking very good. The only downside to him is he was striking out a decent bit, but we were going to hope fine-tune that at the major league level. Um, definitely going to give the 24-year-old a big chance there. A couple other guys to mention that definitely performed very well were Michael Conforto, Andrew McCutcheon, Cabrian Hayes, Brian Reynolds definitely looking good. Daniel Vogelback even also grabbed a 283 batting average. The power was not there, but that's really not to worry. That was not the focus in Vogelback for the spring. Was trying to really kind of complement his power bat with a little more contact, and it seems like a very successful plan heading into the regular season. And and then looking at Michael Perez, same plan with him hitting 316 for the average. Hopefully Michael Perez can have a little more offense of the backup catcher. He's not going to have more of a long tenure with us as we do have top prospect um, Henry Davis coming up in the minor league. So hopefully that'll work out for him as we talk about some of the players starting now. And one quick mention as we're going to get into it, we'll break it down a little bit more, but another guy making his first trips to the major leagues is going to be Leover Paguero. Did not have the best spring, but definitely was a speedster and is going to be a nice versatile guy to have in the infield, looking at more for his defense than anything. And also is not a horrible bat against lefties for the Pittsburgh Pirates, so we're going to see what he can do with some seasons and some at-bats at the major league level. I don't think it's a rushed call-up, but we are going to be jumping into the major league roster the total starting rotation the starting pitchers that we are going to be bringing we're going to be talking about every single guy all 26 of the people that are on this starting rotation starting major league roster as we're going to be talking about Zach Thompson is going to be the first guy followed by Michael Lorenzen followed by Mike Fultonavich Jesus Lazardo, Adonis Medina and Ronsi Contreras so definitely a little bit of a different looking starting rotation than the typical Pittsburgh Pirates as they ended up sending away Jerry Jared Eikhoff, Mitch Keller, and a couple other guys as we're going to be trying to build this rotation. JT Brubaker also is going to be starting the Major League or he's going to be starting his season off at the AAA level. Did not have a good spring training at all. He had an ERA around like a 10 ERA. So we're definitely just going to kind of start him off right there. Hopefully if someone does not perform, Adonis Medina or Jesus Lazardo, we may send those guys down and give someone else a chance. Same thing with Ronsi Contreras, who had a phenomenal spring training. He is going to be also getting a major league look at to start the season as he was not the best. Trevor Rosenthal is going to be the first guy we're going to be talking about as far as the bullpen is he is the first guy. Did not have the best spring training but we're looking to have Trevor Rosenthal who posted a very solid season with the San Diego Padres last year into our bullpen as well. He is not going to be the closer but more of a setup role. Also bringing back Richard Rodriguez from the Atlanta Braves, signed him as a free agent as well. Additions with Trevor Rosenthal, Heath Hembray, Chris Stratton, and Aaron Fletcher are also going to be part of that bullpen into this year, not to mention that we are going to be bringing in the closer of David Bednar into this one. Bednar definitely going to be the main centerpiece of this bullpen as we move into the position players and the first guy that we're going to be talking about is the catcher Roberto Perez who like we said the low average in spring training but he did produce a lot of power against the lefties and definitely is going to be hopefully a nice addition to some power in the major league level catchers were definitely hard to come by um, not a whole lot of guys on the market but Roberto Perez definitely one of the better defenders in that position so hopefully we can keep that going Pirates have always been known to have some of the better defenders I'll Outside of like a catcher like Rod Barajas, we've pretty much had solid defending catchers, so hopefully we're keeping the pace going. Moving into first base, we're going to be talking about Daniel Vogelback. He is technically the only first baseman on the roster, but also he is going to be kind of 
in a, I don't want to call it a platoon role, but he's going to be mixing around his position with the DH role. And then Michael Chavez is also going to be getting some reps at first base as well. Uh, he is just not thrown in there. And I do know in the previous video, we also acquired Gavin Sheets from the Chicago White Sox. Sheets did not have a great spring training, so we are going to be starting him down at AAA along with another guy that we acquired in a trade in Drew Mendoza. So both of those guys that we got in those trades are going to be starting off in AAA. I think that's a good spot for them to kind of see where they stand. Um, a little bit of, of a bigger sample size with Gavin Sheets at the major league level than Drew Mendoza, who is yet to appear. But I think Sheets definitely still just needs a couple more reps to kind of figure some things out and hopefully jump that average up a little bit at the AAA level. Moving over to second base, like we mentioned, Michael Chavez is going to be moving around a lot on this team. He's kind of that super utility guy that we're going to be messing with. So I'm expecting Tusapita Marcano to be getting a lot of reps this year at second base. If he does not pan out, we're going to have to try to move over with someone like Hoy Park or even Jai Juan Bay or Rodolfo Castro until we are fully ready for Nick Gonzalez to jump into the major league level. We did not see him at all in spring training, but he is definitely a guy that is high on our radar. Um, we might have to DFA someone. I'm looking more along the lines of maybe Maybe someone like Rodolfo Castro, but I do kind of like him. So it depends. Maybe even Hoy Park might get DFA'd or packaged into trade just to make room for Nick Gonzalez to get some room in the major leagues. So that is kind of the ideas with what second base is. The middle of this infield is definitely going to be congested and clogged. So we'll be talking about a lot of things. We even have O'Neill Cruz and Leo Vero Paguero at shortstop, which we will be getting into in one second. But as we are going to be talking about that, we're going to be talking about the hot corner and that is in Cabrian Hayes. He's the only third baseman on the roster. We're hoping that he can kind of get into a jump of things as we start off things in the major leagues. Cabrian Hayes definitely had a little bit of an injury spike in the last season, but hopefully he can come to health and have a nice season for the Pirates in this one as we're moving into shortstops right now. And as previously mentioned before, we're going to be talking about the shortstops. The two on the charts right now are going to be some of the top prospects in baseball in O'Neill Cruz and Leo Vero Paguero. O'Neill Cruz did not start the major leagues with the Pirates to start opening day in the real Pittsburgh Pirates, but in this one, he is going to be starting with us. The guy that is hitting 116 mile per hour exit velocity doubles is going to be on the Pittsburgh Pirates. Definitely looking like a very good guy. Already 71 overall, 23 year old with 73 speed, 60 contact, 53 contact against lefties, and then a very balanced power echelon at a 60 against righties, 58 against lefties, and then a vision nearly at 60 as well. So nearly um, 60s or higher pretty much in every single stat. For the guy, um, looking at very good. The Overo Paguero as well, going to hopefully be turning things around at the major league level. Uh, spring training again for him was a little bit slow, but I do like his defense and I do like the potential that he can bring. Uh, Paguero might be a guy that will probably be getting some opportunities for the next couple years and honestly if I'm going to be true with my fans here it will probably be a guy that we might end up trading if we can't find anyone else out just because we did got people that we drafted like Bubba Chandler who I'm very interested to see at the major leagues as well as you can see him at the depth charts there. So we are going to be talking about the next position and that is left field and we brought him home as you guys found out in episode number one. Andrew McCutcheon is going to be the left fielder. A little bit of DH, a little bit of wherever we need him. Even center field on the days that Brian Reynolds needs off but Andrew McCutcheon is back and right with him is going to be first time major leaguers getting his major league debut on opening day is going to be Jack Sawinski, the 23-year-old recently acquired from the San Diego Padres, like we mentioned before, in that Adam Frazier trade, is now going to be at the major league, so hoping to have a good start out of him as we're going to be moving into center field now, and of course, the man to lock down the position is Brian Reynolds, but knocking at the door is going to be 24-year-old Travis Swaggerty, who posted the best spring training out of any Pirate on the roster, also with about the most at-bats as well, so Swaggerty definitely uh, 
a lot of talk around his name. Hopefully he can perform well. Um, 24 years old, if anything, might be a guy that we can move around in the outfield. But we have Conforto over at right, so I'm looking Swaggerty probably will be the left fielder of the future in the coming years as we're finding that position to kind of fill out. As we move into right field, talking about the guy Michael Conforto in right field on that three-year, six million per year contract with the Pittsburgh Pirates is going to be the main line right fielder hoping to produce some power for the Pirates in right field. Ben Gamel is also going to be at that position. The 29-year-old re-signed with the Pirates for another year. Ben the Ga- Ben the Camel Gamel looking to return to the 4-1-2. And then one more guy that I did want to mention in this one is Joe Adele. Again, is going to be starting at AAA. A recently acquired from the Angels, the A potential 22-year-old may be another outfield of the future for the Pirates if he pans out. A couple guys that we're going to be talking about at the AAA level, we mentioned Joe Adele, but Matt Frazier, Hoy Park, Gavin Sheets, Carter Benz, JT Brubaker, Nick Gonzalez, Jamie Ritchie, Anthony Banda, and Austin Price are some of the top guys to mention in the AAA roster. Um, Not too many of those guys really are going to be getting too many reps. Matt Frazier may get some opportunity, Hoy Park as well, Um, Gavin Sheets, sheets. Carter Benz, it's slim, but there is a potential that he gets called up if injuries do kind of happen at the catcher spot, which they are pretty common to happen. JT Brubaker, if we have some starting pitcher struggles at the beginning of the season, Nick Gonzalez would be a guy that we're hoping to start at the major leagues come around, I would say, the all-star break, I would expect seeing Nick Gonzalez. Um, Jamie Ritchie, kind of same thing with Carter Benz. Anthony Banda and Austin Price, unlikely. But again, if injuries do pertain, we may call them up to the major leagues as well. So as we get to the end of this video, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to just take a final look as this depth chart. We are excited to be getting into opening day as we are moments away from from first pitch but that is going to be it for today's video we are going to be heading into the next video having games one two and three against the st louis cardinals so if you guys are excited for that be sure to leave a like comment down below and subscribe for more amazing content because only you only you can make a difference for today's channel so your support is greatly appreciated and with that being said guys i will see you all in the next one Bye bye Thank you.